Welcome to Organic Healthy Life with Nancy Addison. And today we are going to discuss the world, what's going on in, in it today and how it's affecting our health. And I am so pleased to have two amazing doctors with me that their research is just incredible. And I'm going to introduce them and read their bios really quickly now while we're starting. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Plourd is a clinical laboratory scientist and also a certified men menopause practitioner, but she is also a specialist and expert in electromagnetic fields. She received her BS in biological science from California State University. She has a psycholo psychology degree from Pepperdine. And uh, her training in the fields of both medicine and psychology is augmented by invaluable experience gained while working in, uh, at Dianon Systems in Connecticut a cutting edge cancer research laboratory specializing in pathology for diagnosing and monitoring cancer. And my other guest, and uh, I'm not gonna read their entire bios because they're about five pages long <laughs> and we wanna have time for the discussion. But Dr. Stephanie Sinev is a senior research scientist at MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. She received her BS degree in biophysics and she has an MS and EE degrees in electrical engineering. She also, for over three decades, her research has, uh, she has published over 170 referenced articles on various subjects. She works a lot with artificial intelligence, but in the more recent years, she's gone back to biology and she's concentrated mainly on the relationship between nutrition and health. She's been specializing in researching things like Alzheimer's, autism, and cardiovascular disease. Today, we're gonna talk about all of these things, somehow how they're put together in this short time that we have, but we're also gonna talk about nutritional deficiencies and environmental toxins and how they affect our health as well as how electromagnetic fields can affect our health. And I just wanna thank you both for joining us today and sharing your amazing pearls of wisdom with us. Uh, both of your research that uh, I've been following for many, many years is so cutting edge and so relevant to what everybody's experiencing today. And so uh, let's, let's get started. And first we're gonna start with our medical disclaimer. And I'm gonna read that briefly in case there's someone who is only listening and they do not have um, the visual up. But let's see, I just had it. Um, information provided in this video and transcript is for informational purposes only. The information is a result of many years of practice and experience by Nancy Addison and her guest Stephanie Seneff and Dr. Elizabeth Plourd. This information is not intended to substitute as advice provided by your physician or healthcare professional. And any information contained on or in this video or transcript, uh, we make no, no claims for healing anything. This is for educational purposes only. And this has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, Administration so we strongly encourage you to discuss topics, topics of concern with your own personal health care provider. So thank you. So to start off today, you know, we've all been impacted by so many things going on in the world today. And I really believe it's a combination of things. We've got toxic chemicals in our food. We've got genetic modification to our seeds. 
We have water pollution from all types of sources. We have electromagnetic fields that are bombarding us from all kinds of devices as well as towers around the world. And then we've also got uh, different lifestyle situations going on and being impacted by the media and the media putting out a lot of misinformation and wrong information from what I, I can disseminate and telling people they need to do certain things for this pandemic that uh, has been going on now for months. And so today I'd really like for us to have a discussion about the pandemic, uh, the viruses and the electromagnetic field and what you feel is going on and what is important for our listeners to be aware of and also maybe some helpful steps that they can implement in their lives that can help them be healthier and safer. And so welcome. And so so, Stephanie, uh, why don't you start off with a, a short five, uh, two to five minute kind of intro. And then uh, Dr. Plord will go to you. And then maybe we can start a discussion, but uh, just kind of, a, you know, what are your thoughts briefly on what's going on? And, um, and then we'll, we'll move to Dr. Plord and then we'll, we'll start exchanging a little more information. Yeah, okay, well, it's hard to know where to begin, but I will say that uh, as many people probably know, I've been focused on glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. And I believe at this point that glyphosate is the most dangerous chemical in our environment today. Not necessarily the most toxic, but the most dangerous because it's pervasive, we use it carelessly, we don't know how much is in our food, we don't realize we're being poisoned. And, um, and, and I think everybody is being poisoned, especially uh, in countries where it's been pervasive for the longest time with the greatest use, and that is basically the United States. So the United States uses more glyphosate per person than any other country in the world. Brazil is also very heavily um, involved with glyphosate, and the United States and Brazil have been the number one, number two leaders in the COVID-19 epidemic. I don't think that's a uh, correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation, but I think there's a causal relationship there. So I became very interested once COVID-19 hit in trying to understand how, how you could explain where the epidemics, you know, where the outbreaks were happening to explain that in terms of uh, glyphosate exposure. And I've come up with the idea, and I haven't been able to prove this, but it's only a theory at this point, that re in the recent years, we've had a, uh, an increase in the exposure of glyphosate through the air, pol air pollution contaminated with glyphosate. And this is what I'm suspecting. If that's true, we breathe the glyphosate in, it goes in through the nose, it goes right into the brain from there, because that's been shown that the nose can take up, um, cells in the nose can take up the glyphosate and deliver it to the brain. And it goes into the lungs and the lungs are gonna get exposed, they're gonna get damaged. So that glyphosate, I can predict that it would break the lungs in a way that would cause them to be more susceptible to infection. And so when COVID-19 comes into an area where the air is laden with glyphosate, the people who are exposed are much more infective. They're much more easily spread infection than people who don't live in such an area. And what I'm seeing is across the world is a pattern that the places that have the amazing outbreaks where the hospitals get filled up quickly and people are dying, that is, those are the places where I would predict there would be high levels of glyphosate in the air. And this is through biofuel production. So there's been a great increase in biofuels in uh, recent years. Um, as a way to cope with uh, climate change or even just to prevent having to use fossil fuels. So it's supposed to be sort of a really good feel good kind of thing to take um, the mass, you know, like when you harvest the, the crop and then you take the, the residue, all the sticks and whatnot, and you run them through a process that turns in, into fuel. And, um, and we're doing that with many different kinds of biological materials, converting them into fuel and we're not paying any attention to whether there might be glyphosate in that fuel, but you could predict there would be because all of those resources are exposed to glyphosate. Thank you, that's, that's great. And you know, that, that goes along with a lot of what I've, I've heard from other uh, medical professionals. And uh, Dr. Plort, I know your information really uh, is, uh, kind of goes with this really well. 
And so would you like to do the, uh, your intro? And right. Well, I, I uh, got into this because of being a menopause practitioner and, and women calling me saying they were going to menopause and my research with them made me realize that they were really exposed to their electrical smart meters that were causing the same symptoms as menopause. So I spent a lot of years researching what the EMFs are doing to our bodies and was just horrified, which is why it became one of the five books I published because it really impacts every cell. And the problem when we've got something like glyphosate floating around is that these radiations put holes in every cell membrane. And so our cells are like a sieve. Instead of a protective barrier to keep toxins out, we now have these sieves that allow all the toxins inside our cells. They also put holes in our blood bank barrier. So that's allowing it to all these toxins to get in the brain, puts holes in our gut lining. So we're, that's why we've got food allergies because the food is leaking into the blood and the body says, oh, this is foreign. So we make antibodies. So we, are, we no longer have the body that allowed us to protect from toxic chemicals like glyphosate. And so it's kind of a catch-22 that it, it just, you know, which is it? But it, it's a combination. It, it's a combination of everything that's been happening. And, uh, it, and to me, it's a crime that's been happening on the world because all life is being imp impacted. Uh, absolutely. So... Thank you. You know, as, a, as I'm listening to both of y'all, it, it seems to me that Dr. Sinef, your research has shown that the glyphosate causes the leaky gut and makes holes in, in your cells. And then the, the EMFs from your research, Dr. Plort, it's, it's making holes. And so we're just, we're just kind of getting torn up by these toxic frequencies and chemicals and, and I know now the glyphosate's in the rainwater. So this has become a worldwide problem. And it's even in organic food because of that. And mm -hmm. then, so all these different things that going, are going on. And uh, Dr. Sinep, uh, I know you have some slides and, uh, on the glyphosate and some of the problems. I would say, let's start with those. And then Dr. Plord, we can move to yours with your EMFs, and we can t discuss between and after that a little bit of how all you feel this uh, complements each other and how they're impacting our health right now. Okay. Okay. So, Dr. Sinef, here you have the floor. And yes. All right. So, I had just prepared a few slides here to just discuss these ideas about glyphosate in biofuels causing uh, bad outcomes in COVID-19. I don't know why this doesn't want to work. That's so weird. <laughs> Sorry, I always get a little bit stuck there at the beginning. Okay, here we go. Glyphosate biofuels in COVID-19. So, um, so first of all, air pollution. I don't know if people are aware, but there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff showing up with air pollution being linked to COVID-19. And in fact, there was a remarkable Harvard study that found a strong correlation between the numbers of nanoparticles um, and the deaths from COVID-19 across the United States. They looked at counties across the United States and found this very uh, strong correlation. So indicating that something in those nanoparticles is causing harm to the lungs that would cause COVID-19 to be a more serious disease. And now um, when you look at uh, fuels, biodiesel has actually been shown in many studies to have to be more toxic than regular diesel fuel, both in terms of nitrogen oxides and in terms of nanoparticles, and that it induces a, a stronger inflammatory response in humans. And that inflammatory response is what we're seeing uh, in COVID-19. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of toxic substances in uh, the pollution that's produced by the cars and, and trucks and buses on the road. These are some possibilities, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, cyanide, nanoparticles, lead and other toxic metals. So a lot of stuff, but also big question, is there also glyphosate? Again, this is a question, not an answer, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, so when you look at biofuel production and you look at what goes into it, these are some of the things they use, waste cooking oil, cow manure, municipal solid waste, you know, from the sewer system, residues from crops, sugar cane, corn and wheat. After the harvest, they take all the stalks and they put them on a barge and they run them through uh, 
a process that turns them into fuel. Crops grown specifically for biofuel production, such as canola, which is a, a GMO Roundup Ready crop, uh, waste from the meat processing industry, very interesting because the meat processing industry has had a huge problem with uh, outbreaks of COVID-19. And they have become a, mat a mature technology there to um, use the waste from the meat to turn it into uh, biogas that they then use to fuel the plant. So if that biogas is contaminated with glyphosate, those people are being poisoned. Um, and then also forestry residue from the paper industry, forests are also being sprayed heavily with glyphosate to clear out the hardwood trees to make way for the um, faster growing trees. And so they can all be expected to be contaminated with glyphosate. Uh, so this is just really quite interesting. I've been learning all of this stuff recently about how biogas is made. And this is an example here of something called an anaerobic digester where they actually have uh, microbes that, that ferment the, the, the stuff that's thrown in there. And they can put in municipal uh, sewer sludge, organic residues from waste food, you know, various things can go into this uh, machinery. And then the, the microbes break it down and they produce biogas, which is mostly methane. And then you can use that gas and send it off uh, and use it to, you know, for example, fuel the, uh, the sewer processing plant. But also if you have too much, if you do so a lot, you can actually turn it back into gas that you can sell to the local environment and provide that fuel to the local neighborhood. Uh, the, the buildings and whatnot. And so uh, it added to the power grid, basically. So would that so, be poisoning people when they're using that gas? That's what I'm thinking. So, you know, in fact, in, for, for example, in, in, in Massachusetts, uh, Quincy is the city that has by far the, the worst, uh, most deaths, most cases, you know, very bad outbreak in Quincy, Massachusetts, which is right next to the airport. It has these huge tanks that store the aviation fuel Aviation biofuel is one of these fuels that's being added to the airplanes these days. So they're putting biofuel into all the different uh, places where you use energy, you know, the, the cars, the buses, the trains, I don't know the trains, <laughs> the cars, the buses, um, the trucks, the airplanes and home heating oil. And then the, um, the gas, the, the gas that provides a, a gas to the, um, to the, to the residences for, for, for gas a heat or for gas stoves, that sort of thing. And the gas in particular is quite interesting because, uh, a lot of the older cities have a lot of leaks in their gas uh, lines. And those leaks can, uh, can, if there's glyphosate in that gas, the leaks are gonna bring the glyphosate out into the air. So Quincy you know, is, a, is a big suspect. They've, they've been in the biofuel industry from way back. They're one of the early players. They've got all these tanks where they store, they have some, they store um, waste uh, uh, oil, waste, uh, cooking oil from the restaurants goes in there, for example. They just grab these things. It's very, um, you know, it sounds very ecologically sound to be able to reuse these materials and not just waste them. But mm -hmm. if there is a, if there is glyphosate in them, I think there's a, a, a very uh, likely chance that that glyphosate is ending up in the air. People are breathing it and it's making them, it's, it's, it's harming their lungs. This is uh, New York State. New York City was the epicenter, was really the epicenter of the epidemic in America. It hit, got hit really hard, really fast, overwhelmed the hospitals. Within New York City, Quincy, uh, not Quincy, <laughs> Queens and Brooklyn were the epicenter of the epicenter. And so Queens is right in the middle of this place where they have all these different um, sites where they process fuel. They've got the, the, the river that comes down and uh, brings in the bio um, waste from the, from the crops that are being grown in upper state New York. And so things like wheat sprayed right before the harvest with glyphosate, um, you know, and, and the corn, you know, all of these um, crops that are sprayed routinely with glyphosate are being hauled down and put into these factories where they're turned into fuel. And they're also kind of combined with the sewer system as well. So it's kind of interesting how this is all, we're learning how to recycle waste, but if we're doing it with poison in the waste, it's a problem. And so, so many of these capture energy in the form of biogas or biodiesel fuel from the biomass, which is the raw materials that come out of the waste of the food industry. This is just an interesting paper that I found a specific example of a case study of a mechanic who was, he had used a glyphosate based, based herbicide with an applicator that got clogged. And then he tried to clean the applicator using a bucket of diesel fuel as a solvent. And he started coughing up blood and was rushed to the hospital. And then he was diagnosed with pneumonitis, which is inflammation in the lungs, um, which is something that's very much linked to COVID-19. So what I'm trying to say here is that I think diesel fuel 
may in fact be um, like a, a surfactant or an, a, an adjuvant that increases the toxicity of glyphosate. So he was exposed to both of them simultaneously, which is what would be the situation if you've got a diesel vehicle that's running partially biodiesel, partially regular diesel, and then if it's, if it's got a poorly tuned engine, you know, this, whatever's coming out of the exhaust could be uh, contaminated with something that's very, really perfect for allowing glyphosate to get into the lungs. Do you mind if I uh, say something right here? Absolutely. But Dr. Plord was talking about vehicles and how they put out this electromagnetic field that also hurts us. And Dr. Plord, I'd just love to hear your thoughts on, on how you think the, the vehicles are also kind of combined with this glyphosate um, you know, creating a, a breakdown in your immune system and causing these, these problems. It makes all the sense in the world because I, the electrical magnetic cocoon that we're in, in our cars today it is, is huge. I have people call and say they can't even ride in the car anymore because they get so sick from just the radiation. And then if they've got, if they're breathing in all this fuel, you know, all these fumes from the diesels, et cetera, in the cars. You know, it, I, I have people in some of my consults where people are saying they don't want to ride in a car anymore. They just get too sick. And so all of it's going together that we're putting holes in our cell membranes and our blood brain barrier and then breathing in all of this toxic. And I, I love this connection to the glyphosate in trying to make uh, trying to make the earth a better place, but we're actually making it worse by uh, not understanding that uh, we can't use things like glyphosate. So it, it yeah, that's a very interesting point. I think that the, the sort of smart car technology that's really blossomed in the last few years, you know, and everyone's using all this internet stuff in their car now. And I think that that's very interesting to think about the electromagnetic noise on top of the fumes uh, containing, possibly containing glyphosate. Well, I've had, I, I, I really believe that we weren't meant to be put into a hybrid or electric car. There's no study. They never did a study, but I have people calling and we know people who are dying of heart failure by driving them because it, the heart's electric. Mm -hmm. And then you add the toxins uh, from the fumes and it makes all the sense in the world that they're struggling. They can't breathe. They go to the hospital emergency room because they can't breathe. And so we're really creating a horrible toxic environment for uh, these cars of people trying to get around. It's right. It's, it is it's sort of scary to think of all these good convergence of all these different um, factors that are um, contributing. And I know that in fact that uh, EMFs have been shown to uh, cause calcium uptake by the cells, which can cause neurotoxicity, and glyphosate has been shown to cause calcium uptake as well. So I suspect, you know, we have the leaky gut, the calcium uptake, all those things are happening in response to both of these um, dangers in our environment, and they're working uh, synergistically to cause harm. Absolutely. All right. So this just shows that the biofuel industry is starting to really heat up in recent years. You can see it's sort of steady up to 2014. This is worldwide. And then going up in 2016, project, projected to have a huge increase. So we're really starting to grow up exponentially. The use, they were really, that, that field is maturing so that they've really become cost effective and they're starting to really um, get it going. And I think that's a, a problem with respect to this possibility. Interestingly, when you look at biofuels consumption by country, two countries stand out um, by far compared to any of the others, which is the United States and Brazil. And those are the two countries that have been hit the hardest by, they have the most uh, deaths uh, from COVID-19 around the world and way out of proportion with their population. So the United States has 26% of, this was around mid-June, I think that I looked this up, 26% of the deaths from COVID with 4.2% of the world's population Brazil had 11% of the deaths with 2.7% of the world's population. And interestingly, if you look at Taiwan, Taiwan has been singled out as a remarkable country that's had tremendous success with fighting off COVID-19, despite living right, you know, being right next door to China with having a lot of fl uh, flights coming in from China. They've had only seven deaths total and just a few hundred cases of COVID-19. 
And so I looked into Taiwan in terms of glyphosate and GMO, uh, you know, and um, biofuel. And Taiwan uses little glyphosate. They have GMO-free agriculture. They have no biofuel industry. They actually tried a little bit, 1% biodiesel in automobiles back in, um, before 2008. But in 2008, they decided not to, to pursue that because of the humid climate was causing microbial growth that seemed to be disrupting the engine efficiency. So they just decided we're not going to do biofuels. No biofuels and very little glyphosate. And they have extremely wonderful results with COVID-19. So you know, we, we, we make up these stories that the reason is because they're so careful and they do social distancing and they, they, they monitor, I mean, all that stuff. It's probably helping, but I think the biggest factor is the degree to which the population is being exposed by toxic elements in the environment that's causing the distinction between the countries that are able to control it and the countries that are not. Um, now, I have this other subtopic, which is really fascinating to me and is kind of a, um, a smoking gun with respect to, um, no pun intended, but with, with, with respect to COVID-19, because I was aware of this vaping lung disease before COVID-19 even hit, and I was looking into it. I was curious about it because it, it seemed to me like glyphosate could be involved. And I'm always looking for things where glyphosate might be causing trouble. So e-cigarettes, you know, have become popular uh, over the last 10 years or so. And um, they use glycerol as the, um, I guess I don't talk about the glycerol here, but anyway, those symptoms. So this vaping lung disease is showing up among these e-cigarette smokers. And the, the, feet, the characteristic symptoms of this disease are exactly the same as the symptoms of COVID-19. The shortness of breath, a, a dry cough, um, chest pain, slight fever, uh, nausea, all, all these different kinds of gastrointestinal symptoms that are also showing up with COVID-19. Um, and so subjective fever, that's sort of a um, feature of COVID-19. And then this is important, rapid respiratory symptoms such as, you know, runny nose, sneezing, congestion were not commonly reported. That's very, very much a characteristic of COVID-19. So it's really interesting uh, to think whether um, the symptoms of COVID-19 may be in part due to the, um, to the contamination of the lungs with glyphosate. So the thing with e-cigarettes is that the major component of the e-cigarettes is glycerol. And that's what's burned to, uh, to make it, to provide the smoke that allows you to take up the nicotine. Um, and glycerol is a major byproduct of the biodiesel fuel production industry. So it's coming up to glut the market as we increase the production of biodiesel, we're ending up with more and more glycerol in the market. It's becoming very cheap, which makes, which may be a better motivation for the, even for the invention of e-cigarettes in the first place. And um, they've shown in studies that something in the e-cigarettes besides the nicotine is what's causing the problem. Because even without the nicotine, you still get the increased inflammation in the lungs. Um, so there was a really fascinating study that was done on mice. They exposed them to vaping fumes for four months. And then they got the idea of infecting them with the influenza virus, because uh, I think they suspected that the vaping fumes might have affected their reaction to influenza. And sure enough, they saw dramatic um, excess expression of inflammatory cytokines, which is exactly what we're seeing with COVID-19. People who are getting sick with COVID-19 have, the illness is really a consequence of an overreactive immune system and inflammatory, um, ex you know, cytokine storm, they call it, where there's just way too much inflammation in the lungs that starts to destroy the lung tissues uh, over responsive immune system. And this is exactly what happened to these mice when they were exposed to flu virus. And then they actually looked at the lungs of these mice and were able to characterize what was going on there. And that was very, very interesting to me because they identified two things in particular, a suppressed um, suppression of these surfactant proteins called SF, SPA and SPD, and then accumulation of fatty lipid deposits in the lungs, in these in, in, uh, in immune cells that came into the lungs and accumulated fatty deposits. And these are just showing that, uh, the ch charts are showing the suppression with and without um, the nicotine. Uh, either with or without the nicotine, you get similar effects. So what's interesting to me with respect to glyphosate is that these, these particular proteins, SPD and SPA, have a long sequence of a collagen-like uh, stalk that's very, very important for them to work. And collagen has this sequence, GXY, 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 which has every third amino acid. This is a protein. Proteins are made up of amino acids on a string. Every third one is a glycine in this collagen, in any kind of collagen material. Collagen is the most common protein in the body. It's all over the joints and the bones and the skin. And it's, I think the presence of glyphosate in collagen is causing all kinds of 
issues with our health today with various aches and pains, back pain and, and uh, shoulder replacement surgery, all of these problems we're having with our joints, I think are connected to glyphosate messing up the collagen. But if glyphosate messes up the collagen in these proteins, they're a member of a class of proteins called collectins, and there's several other ones as well. They're very, very important for trapping viruses and bringing them to the immune system so they can be cleared. And so if they are messed up by glyphosate, they actually get stuck inside the cell. They don't even get released. And then you, the, the, the uh, immune system can't clear the virus and the virus is allowed to multiply and grow. And that's how then the person can infect many other people because they're coughing up lots of virus particles since their immune system can't trap them. And so this is a quote from this paper. The binding of this multimeric SPD to microbe associated glycans could block the interaction of the microbe with its receptors. In other words, prevent it from getting taken up. It could aggregate the microbes or it might act as an opsonin Opsonin, I'm not sure how to say that, <laughs> which would enhance the uptake of the microbe by the, by the immune cell to allow it to be cleared. So very, very important. And there's other kinds of collectins as well that are very, very important for fighting disease that would be disrupted by glyphosate. So in other words, glyphosate would disrupt the immune system's capability of removing the viruses, which is why the viruses would then be allowed to multiply out of control. And then you get this incredible inflammatory response to try to kill the viruses by basically shooting them. And then the other thing was the lipid accumulation in the cells. Um, and this is a picture from that paper that shows um, the differences in the characteristics. And they have these different ways of, of looking at them here. But you can see, um, the, this is the, um, the exposure to the gly glycerol with and without the nicotine of these two. And you can see very, very different from just air or smoke, the response of the cell showing these, um, this, is, this is all these lipid uh, particles that are accumulating inside the cells. So something very strange is going on with these cells in response to this um, uh, exposure to this glycerol, which is uh, very, very similar to what happens when rats are exposed to low doses of glyphosate uh, orally, then their lipid, the lipid accumulation of the livers is very, very similar to what's happening with the lungs in these, in these cases. So I'm suspecting it's the same phenomenon. It's just that when you're exposed from the air, it's the lungs that get hit with the glyphosate. Whereas if you eat it orally, it's the liver that gets exposed. And this uh, recent paper showed um, very uh, low doses of glyphosate caused what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, where it, the, the liver accumulates these fatty deposits, which is very similar to what's happening with these mice that are exposed to the vaping fumes. And so just to summarize this, a strange new lung disease associated with vaping is, is strongly resembles COVID-19. Glycerol is a byproduct of the, of the biofuel production industry, and I'm suspecting that it's contaminated with glyphosate. Mice exposed to these vaping fumes have very specific lung damage, which, would, uh, which makes sense um, with respect to how glyphosate affects cell, uh, proteins and whatnot. So it, it's consistent with glyphosate. It's consistent with COVID-19 in the sense that it increases their sensitivity to the flu similar to what would be expected if they were exposed to another virus such as the SARS-CoV-2. Um, and then so glyphosate could be disrupting these lung proteins through substitution for glycine in these collagen-like stalks. And it's been shown to cause lipid buildup in the liver when rats are exposed orally to low doses. And then I just have a summary. Air pollution is a clear risk factor for COVID-19. Uh, many toxicants can contribute, nanoparticles, nitrogen oxide, cyanide, sulfur dioxide, toxic metals, but glyphosate may be an overlooked factor and it may be the primary reason why the US and Brazil were so hard hit. Um, so with their high use of biofuel, high use of glyphosate for many years, those two countries stand out as being susceptible to, to a disaster when COVID-19 uh, shows up. And then this strange new lung disease caused by vaping fumes looks a whole lot like COVID-19, could be due to glyphosate contamination in the glycerol. And then glyphosate's mechanisms could be due to glycine substitution in critical proteins, especially the collectins that are crucial for trapping and removing the viruses. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That Roll was fantastic. <laughs> and, and you know, that really complements Dr. Plord's slides also. And uh, Dr. Plord and I have been discussing uh, a, a, a lot about um, this, this whole world situation. And uh, one of the things that, that that she uh, has been researching and studying is, you know, they have been upping the electromagnetic field that is affecting us. And so uh, Dr. Plord, why don't you take over from now 
and kind of expand on on what you you've got um, to share with us today. And then also, I would like questions and answers in there, Doctor Seneff. If if you feel while she's having her slides, if you have something uh, to ask her to uh, say at the time, uh, please do. And then we'll we'll kind of regroup after that and and see where we can put the puzzle pieces together. <laughs> Okay, alrighty. Okay, thanks so much. And thank you, Dr. Seneff. I mean, you're just, you're incredible. I, I just really <laughs> appreciate all that you're able to, to put together uh, like that. So, um, I, how do I get this? On the bottom? On the bottom? Yeah, on the um, right. Is that, is that? On the far, on the right there, the, the last thing to click, on the bottom. Not, not uh, over left. <laughs> Just before that. Uh, I don't. I don't see that anymore. That thing. I don't see if that. If you anymore. hover over the one over the bottom of your screen, they'll pop up. Um. You just have to it's hover not, your it's cursor. That's where it is. Because where does it say start? You're, you are screen sharing, but it's not. She, she wants oh, to. No. She, yeah, but I don't want Slideshow, that. slideshow. <laughs> Oops. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you, slideshow. Oh, thank you. Oh, perfect. Thank Great. goodness we have computers, but trying to trying to learn them all so i i uh, always want to include the symptoms from cell phones and electromagnetic radiation because this is what my my consulting practices shifted to because people come in and they have all of these problems and uh and they say they were fine they were fine they were fine they woke up one morning and have all these symptoms just overnight and it's very debilitating. And the doctors, this is not in the textbook. I've just read recently, this is in the Russian textbook. Uh, they have this, that the electromagnetic radiation sickness and poisoning. Uh, but our doctors don't know it. And so they go in and they get all these tests. And uh, they can't find anything. Everything's normal. I have ER nurses that have said, people come in with all of this. They do all the testing. And none of the testing is showing anything. And so some way they're saying, well, it's, it's got to be in your head. It's in the spouses. One is sick and one isn't. The spouse that isn't thinks the other one's crazy. And that's why I'm on the third edition of the electromagnetic radiation uh, EMF freedom book. Uh, so that a spouse can hand it to their spouse and say, I'm not crazy. Here's the proof. Because in that book, I have how all of these symptoms are caused by electromagnetic radiation. There's a lot of reasons for these, but, but these, the electromagnetic radiation does cause these, uh, these symptoms. And so, uh, and I like to include this electromagnetic radiation uh, spectrum because we are moving up uh, way over on the left-hand side, household electricity, 50 and 60 Hertz, we started getting sick in electromagnetic radiation sickness back when we were just at the 50, 60 hertz. But we've moved up into the radio, television, and up into the radar range. And the military has known that the radar range made sailors on the ship sick. And yet our smart meters are 2.4 gigahertz in the radar range. Our cell phones have this, almost all of the cell phones, 2.4 gigahertz. And then the new 5G is going to be up in this range, 20 to 30 gigahertz. And all the Wi-Fi or all this. So when we're sitting in all these buildings now uh, that have Wi-Fi, uh, and they say free Wi-Fi, we tried to rent a place in Hawaii when I realized I was reacting and I didn't have an answer yet. We couldn't find a place to rent because they said the public demands Wi-Fi. 
And so this, this is not a good thing to sit in the middle of. And they say that it's uh, not harmful because it's not ionizing. And over on the left-hand side is the X-ray and nuclear. They break DNA immediately. The non-ionizing was we're sitting in, it pulsates the DNA to the point that it breaks. So it is harmful. And it is causing oxidation. Uh, oxidation, all these things are going on. Uh, reactive oxygen species are being created. Uh, free radicals are mitochondrial harmed. All our cell membranes are being harmed. It is harming the DNA. And they're saying that they're thinking that why we have so many sick kids today. One of the reasons is that the man was carrying the cell phone in his pocket. His DNA got broken. And then he impregnates uh, an egg. And the, we are designed to repair DNA. I, one of the reasons I went into this whole field is I'm going off our human body. We're designed to repair and we will repair the DNA break from the radiation. But if the sperm goes in and, and implants into an egg before it can, can repair that DNA, then it can no longer be repaired. So that goes on with the child as they develop. And, so, and definitely cancers. There's no doubt that electricity is connected to the cancers uh, over time. So, and this is just the car electronics. Um, the car electronics causes oxidation damage. I could not believe that they never put a person in an electric or a hybrid car to see if indeed it was safe. I couldn't find any study. If they did it, it wasn't published. And so they, these researchers decided to just use our human blood platelets because we're really having bleeding disorders. And because our platelets are being oxidized, this is only 30 minutes, 30 minutes of exposure to the car electronics, not even a hybrid or electric, just all the new bells and whistles, you know, that, that make your seat vibrate because there's a car next to you, um, you know, and and beep you if you're too close to front or back. So those are oxidizing our platelets, they're oxidizing our whole body. And so we are really being harmed just by riding in a car. And this is what's happening to our blood brain barrier. The top, the, the A up above is the normal rat brain without being exposed to the EMF radiation. The B, all these dark spots these arrows showing all this. This is all dead brain cells. And this is only one two hour exposure to a mobile phone that's tenth, one tenth of the power of the mobile phones today. So, because this is a, an older study, uh, this was in 2003. And one tenth of the power, we're allowed 1.6 watts per kilogram by the FCC. This was, was milligrams not even one watt, it was milligrams of power. And so they did this biopsy 50 days after the exposure. And they're saying that the reason they're still there is that the brain wasn't able to repair the, the damage in the dead brain cells. And so this is the oxidative stress. These free radicals that the EMF are creating uh, are really harming our cells in causing the oxidative stress to all these cells, to our brain. And so we are really, we're becoming rust buckets, if you want to put it that way, because rust is oxidative damage. So this is kind of hard to see. It's a little small, but it's explaining how a cell phone radiating into the brain uh, winds up killing the nerve cells. There's just no two ways around it because of oxidation. And these researchers found that eating antioxidants alleviated this potential risk of the exposure. And then I include this because we've really got to wake up to the fact that all of our cells are getting holes in them, like holes in our cell membrane and breaking our DNA. And they're saying that this kind of uh, damage is resulting in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and autism. So our poor cells cannot block out things like the glyphosate. So we're really uh, just 
we, we can't stop this damage between the electromagnetic radiation and then the toxins in our air and in our food. Uh, we can't prevent the damage that's happening inside our cells. So as far as our immune balance, our immune balance is totally being disrupted by the electromagnetic radiation and we need our T, they're called T helper cells. We need our T1 and T2 to be in balance and they're no longer in balance when we're exposed to electromagnetic radiation. So these are necessary to be in balance to protect us from bacteria and viruses and mold and Lyme and parasites. And, um, and, and we can't anymore because our TH1 is greatly reduced when we're exposed to, to electromagnetic radiation. And at the same time, our TH17 is greatly increased and that drives the inflammation and it drives the autoimmune diseases that we're seeing today that are so rampant. And a high TH17 is associated with a poor clinical outcome in breast cancer. So this is our mitochondria. Uh, this inner membrane is where all the respiration takes place. This is where we make our ATP, our ad ad adenosine triphosphate, and that's our fuel, that's our gasoline. And the electromagnetic radiation destroys this inner membrane. It destroys the outer membrane, but it also destroys the inner membrane. So we can't make uh, our energy. And the studies show that we lose in 30 minutes exposure, we have a 27% drop in our ATP. So, and we can't sleep. Uh, it decreases our melatonin. And so we can't repair our body. We can't be as healthy as we could be because sleep is essential for repairing the body. So uh, this shows just two hours a day exposure to 900 uh, millihertz of uh, foam. And in 45 days, we have this drop of melatonin. The sham was 85 uh, picograms per milligram. And the, the rats that were exposed were 66. So we've got this great drop in our melatonin and our melatonin is so important, not just in sleep, but in many ways. It, it helps protect pregnancy. It just, it, it's amazing amazing um, molecule. So when we're harming our mitochondria to this point, and we look at mitochondrial dysfunction diseases, we're, we're seeing everything that's happening today. We're seeing the autism and the heart disease and kidney and diabetes and cancer and Alzheimer's and, and bipolar schizophrenia, it, aging, chronic fatigue. Um, chronic fatigue wasn't even it didn't even exist before the electromagnetic radiation and uh, muscle weakness and muscle loss and and the jerky movements uh, studies are showing that that exposure to the emf and creates these jerky movements and vision and hearing problems it's really harming our eyes uh, these radiations harm, harm our eyes tremendously and then uh, hearing and and uh, mental retardation. So we are really, uh, we are seeing an explosion of all this. And one of the major reasons for this is the electromagnetic radiation. So we can, you know, protect ourselves. We can reduce our exposure. We don't need to use our cell phone as an alarm clock in our bedroom, we can get a battery operated alarm clock it, because people, it, there was no warning. So people don't think about the fact that they're bringing in this radiation. We talked to a, a waiter one time, he was yawning and he's saying, I'm sorry, I, I, I haven't slept. My, my kid's not sleeping. I, I think he's teething. And as we kept talking to him, uh, it, it was like a light bulb went on. He goes, oh, he hasn't slept since we put the Wi-Fi router in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. And and so it, so people aren't warned that this is really damaging. It, it really is. And, uh, and we can't sleep around this. Uh, and so you can protect yourself from sources. The reason that I can even function is that 
we have energy dots that allow me to use a computer to be on this, this program in front of this computer uh, and to you know, be able to keep functioning out in the public because I would feel like everybody's cell phone like a knife. I, I had to become a hermit until I found these energy dots. And then absolutely we want people to stop using sunscreen. Do not use any products that have an SPF value. Um, these sunscreens are, they actually cause melanoma and I can do a whole program just on how the sunscreens create melanoma. And there was never any proof that the sunscreens would prevent melanoma, none. And yet it's a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide contaminating all the world, water of the world, all the oceans, the seas, the rivers, the lakes, it, it's everywhere and it's harming all the life in there. And then when you eat the fish, you're eating the sunscreen because the fish are absorbing the sunscreen so it's in their muscle and really the answer is you can go out in the sun I, I've been doing this for so long I've had so many people say that uh, all they do is eat a high antioxidant diet and go out in the sun and they're fine they don't need to they don't burn uh, and there's no need to so these are all the great foods we need all these colors because each color has its own antioxidant and they all work together synergistically. So we really need to eat a variety of them and they help protect from the radiation damage from the sun as well as from the electromagnetic radiation. So it's the same diet to um, you know, be better and protect yourselves uh, from, from all this radiation. And this is just, I had to show this because of the, um, the major symptom of unable to breathe and not, not I, I can't get enough air. And this is what happened. Uh, this, second, um, this second slide here shows how all the red blood cells stick together and then they can't deliver oxygen and so then people are oxygen starved. Uh, I have people going to the emergency room due to unable to get enough air. And then they go into the emergency room that has a forest of antenna on top of their roof. And so they're going into an EMF environment and uh, we know people that have died. They're, they're going there because they can't get enough air because of electromagnetic radiation and they go in there and just get exposed to more. And so the energy dots that help save my life uh, on the phone, this is the same person, the same phone, and uh, all the, the red blood cells are all separated out delivering oxygen. And I now know that 15 years ago, I my blood was doing this whole rouleau because we went to, I gave a, a menopause seminar in Colorado Springs at 7,900 feet. I thought it was because I was at 7,900 feet and I've been at sea level my whole life. I thought that's all it was. It wasn't until I went back a few years ago. I've been using these energy dots for about nine years now. And a couple of years ago, I went back. I bought a whole box of oxygen files because I didn't want to feel that way, but I wanted to attend these conferences and I was fine. So because I've been using these energy dots, my, my red blood cells were all separated out and I didn't have any problem with breathing. Oh, and that's it, and this shows um, the stress on the body. This helps me understand that um, that even when they're off, this blue line over here uh, is showing the stress on the body and off, and then um, standby, and then sending and receiving. And then our new cell phone dots bring it down to, you can barely see the stress on the body. And this is why it works so well. It, it really does make our phones safer. So, and our energy field, we're getting pulls in our energy field. This is why I feel every cell phone like knife in me, all these holes. And then this is two days use of our technology, this on the right, that solid uniform uh, energy field. In two days, I was back in public without feeling knives in my body. So, and water, we're 70% water. We now have an aqua dot. This is critical. Um, yeah, it takes the, uh, EMF out of a water bottle, but I also have been encouraging people to wear the aquadont because we are 70% water. And grounding, you had talked about grounding, Nancy. Uh, I sleep grounded. Uh, I travel with a grounding sheet. 
no matter where I sleep. And then computer brownie pads, we finally have these again. They stopped making them like what we believe were good and we wouldn't carry them. And now they, they're finally making them to what we feel are, are valid you know, specifications to really work. And the grounding is brings in the Earth's electrons to repair the damage of all the trillions of cells. So I feel it's important for everybody to sleep grounded, work grounded. And then this is just our contact information. Uh, so that Thank you. And, and I'm going to you know, also, for all of y'all watching this and listening, uh, I'm also going to put both of their contact information and links okay. in the mm -hmm. description below. So, you know, we're definitely going to have all that information. And, um, you know, it's really amazing that you know, we are just are just our whole environment worldwide, and this really is affecting everybody worldwide. We are mm -hmm. just so saturated with both of these things, and and both of your research is just so important. And uh, Dr. Sinef, that what she was talking about goes just directly in with what you've been researching with the glyphosate, and how uh, you know it's you know, causing, uh, going across the blood brain barrier and carrying toxic things to the brain and, and uh, lending itself to higher rates of autism and cancer and heart disease and things like that. And then her sunscreen uh, goes along with your recent research, which was uh, just so fantastic on the cholesterol and the sulfur compounds. Right. I know we synergize completely on the vitamin D, uh, sunscreen mm -hmm. issue. Uh, Elizabeth, can you just uh, stop screen sharing so we can see our faces? Oh, am I? Oh, oh. we've just got black here. So. I think you just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, Perfect. So, so Dr. Senef, I'd like to hear your thoughts um, concerning uh, Dr. Plort's uh, screen, uh, slideshow and and how your your thoughts on on how all that has been fitting together with your research as well and what I, you've been finding absolutely i mean i think it's really amazing how much uh the effect of emfs uh overlaps with the effect of glyphosate and i mentioned before about the calcium uptake which both of them have been shown to cause calcium uptake by the neurons which mm -hmm. is what leads to neuron burnout it causes a um you know damage to the neurons and um, the whole issue of mitochondria as well. I'm actually really uh, intensely studying right now how glyphosate messes up the mitochondria and I'm finding uh, a lot of evidence. And so that's, a, again, synergistic uh, effects between the EMFs and the glyphosate. And it's very, very interesting to think about the fact that the cars, I mean, the cars have really blossomed with all these different lovely devices that allow you to do this and that you know, all the electronics that's now, they've become very sophisticated, even just like the navigational assistance, you know, and then how you can get music from the air. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the cars that must be contributing to uh, EMF exposure, I would think. I, I don't, that's not a space that I'm an expert in, but it does look like to me, it could definitely be a factor. It's certainly one of those things that's going up dramatically in recent years, along with a dramatic, dramatic rise in all these problems. I think a lot of people have identified EMFs as a problem associated with autism. I think that's a very big space right now. And um, so it, it makes sense to me that the, those two, the glyphosate and the EMFs are working synergistically. And then of course, people are so concerned about the sun, they're slobbering on the sunscreen. Sunscreen is toxic. It actually has aluminum in it. And, and Elizabeth I wrote, uh, wrote a book that I read from cover to cover with like 600 different references. It was very well researched on sunscreen. That's how she and I met actually. So that was where we started. And, um, and I was really much, uh, again, I've always been against sunscreen and I'm totally in favor of getting out in the sun to get your vitamin D instead of taking it orally. I have never taken a vitamin D supplement, uh, but I'm sure my vitamin D levels are high because I get tremendous amounts of sun. And um, an easy way to do that is to get a convertible car, but then you've got the problem with the air pollution. So it's kind of, we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place in many cases, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. wow. Right. And, and uh, one of the things is there are a lot of people that aren't, aren't able to get out in the sun. Uh, for whatever reason. So, you know, they probably do need to, to do a supplement. I had a friend get really sick recently and she couldn't seem to get well. And I said, have you had your vitamin D levels checked? And we live in Texas. She lives in Texas and 
you know, she would think that she's out in the sun enough and she knows not to wear sunscreen, but she got her vitamin D levels checked and they were very, very low. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, you know, in, in my own opinion, <laughs> uh, I would go fix that immediately. And she went the next day and got a vitamin D IV mm. uh, along with, um, I, I also recommended she get uh, just a, a, you know, like a Myers cocktail IV as well, because I thought she was low in a lot of nutrition, uh, which the glyphosate can cause. The glyphosate destroys so many of the nutrients in the soil. And I know that she doesn't eat organic uh, mm. nearly enough. And so she went and got this and she really got her vitamin D levels up, but she noticed within uh, a few days that she was way, way better than she had been. And she also started noticing that colored spots on her body were disappearing, little mm. bruises that she had had were disappearing and just, you know, her overall complexion and health was was restored but I've also been telling her <laughs> to turn off her cell phone and put it out of her room at night and so you know it is a combination of addressing all of these things that are bombarding us uh, in so many areas of our lives and and just trying to kind of maintain or or fix or maneuver your way through <laughs> through the soup of life. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I have a, several things to say responding to that. One is that she mentioned the polyphenols and the flavonoids. These are such important nutrients coming from the plants and they are direct uh, outcome. Out, their precursors are outputs of the shikimate pathway, which is the pathway that glyphosate disrupts. So glyphosate disrupts the plant's abilities to produce these very, very healthy um, molecules, complex molecules that are normally produced by the plants actually for their, to, in response to their own stress. But those molecules are really excellent antioxidants for us, but they're going to be depleted in a plant that's exposed to glyphosate, number one. Number two, glyphosate disrupts the enzymes in the liver that activate vitamin D. We have an absolute epidemic in vitamin D deficiency in this country. I think glyphosate's a major player even if you're getting exposed to the sun. Well, first of all, melanin, which is the, sun, the, the skin's natural protection from the sun is also a product that comes out of the chicken mate pathway. There are so many really, really important molecules that come out of the chicken mate pathway that are getting disrupted by glyphosate. So we don't have, a, a lot of people tell me, you know, I, I, I don't tan, I just burn. So I have to stay out of the sun. And I think the reason why they're not tanning is because they don't have melanin because they, they're not producing enough melanin because they don't have mm -hmm. the the precursors that they need that should come out of that shikimate pathway, which is being produced by the microbes in the gut or from the food, but all of them are being exposed to glyphosate. Is there um, any way to address that or to fix it so that they can make Get that? rid of glyphosate, eat an organic diet. I mean, that is so important, eat an organic diet. Well, but it, it, since it's water soluble and it is now in the rainwater, and, and I learned a little bit of that from you because yeah. you had tested the rainwater on your building. Right. It, uh, yeah. Anthony Samsel has been collecting rain samples from his friends around the world. And I sent him a sample from the, from my uh, rooftop. Is it, you know, I'm on the fourth floor of MIT and there's an area where you can go outdoors. I went outdoors. It was raining. I collected some water. I sent it to him and he tested. It was contaminated with glyphosate in Cambridge. So I wonder whether that's just from the air, you know, the toxic air from the uh, air pollution in the city. Um, yeah, I tested I mean, it in my home in Winchester and it was negative. So that was sort of good news. I had the Winchester water where I live in the suburb and the Cambridge water and the Cambridge water was positive and the Winchester water was negative. So that's quite interesting. That is. Yeah. It, it all, it's all fascinating how all of these really do fit together. Dr. Plore, do you want to expand on Dr. Seneff's thoughts on, on uh, that with the glyphosate and the electromagnetic field and I have to admit I see them doing very similar things to the body so your body's just kind of getting this double overload of this and then the glyphosate is high synthetic estrogen mm -hmm. and and then the EMFs lower your progesterone which is what Dr. Plort has taught me uh, and the progesterone uh, can really disrupt your sleep, but also low testosterone can cause high anxiety and severe depression. So um, do you want to maybe expand a little bit with the hormones and how, how that, uh, how people, um, how that might affect people? And then 
Uh, I would like to move into some suggestions from y'all on what people can do to help <laughs> to help themselves get healthier and protect them in the future. Right. Well, I, yeah, I just want to uh, emphasize how important this organic diet is because I was telling Stephanie yesterday that I, when we first went into lockdown here in California. And it was difficult to go places and restaurants shut down, trying to find organic food that I just, I just started eating conventional. And I could not believe how sick I felt. I really felt sick. I hurt all over. And, um, and then finally enough places opened up and I could do organic again. And, and uh, when I switched back to organic, it all disappeared. So we have really got to really honor them and there's not enough organic food uh, available at this point um, for most people. So, and they don't recognize the need for it. So hopefully as the more demand, you know, this type of, of Zoom call will help create more demand and that we'll get more and more because very little land is devoted to organic farming in America itself. And I don't know how much is in Hawaii, but, um, I know that Monsanto has gotten into some of the, the problems there in Hawaii, some of the soil in, in Hawaii, which is really sad. So, um, but it, it's really important that we look at all these things that we've been told are essential. You know, like get rid of your cordless phone. It is convenient. It's nice to be able to take it outside, but your cordless phone is, is actually more toxic than the cell phones. And so we can do things like that to, to make our whole environment that more harmonious. Because it, we're disrupting ourselves, we're, we're, we're creating chaos. The, uh, the commercial food is creating chaos in our bodies. And uh, we need to get to more harmony in order to have health. We can't have health when there's all this disruption going on inside of our body. Right. And I think, I think that's where, you know, I, I've been so passionate and that's why I'm called my, my business organic healthy lifestyle because I just felt that was absolutely paramount in, in everything because the, what you eat becomes your cells, your tissue and your blood and the glyphosate, you can't wash that out. <laughs> and the genetic modification, you can't wash that out. And, and so, you know, this is one reason I have so embraced both of y'all's brilliant research and information because uh, it has taught me so much and also really helped me to move uh, into healthier ways of, of doing things. But uh, Dr. Seneff, yours, yours really helped me understand in so many ways uh, the glyphosate in a, in a, in a bigger, uh, bigger way. I mean, I, I knew it, would, it did certain things, but you, your research has really taught me, uh, you know, like all the little specifics and it does so many negative things to the body. It's like this, 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 this. And, you know, uh, I've tried to eat organic since I started researching this about 35 years ago. And I really do, even in my cookbooks that I write, uh, with the nutrition information, I put a lot of things in there for detoxification. So to detox from uh, the glyphosate and the toxins, but also from the EMFs, uh, Dr. Plord, like the, the bentonite clay. And, uh, and then I have chapters in there on grow your own food, you know, <laughs> <laughs> even if it's just sprouts, <laughs> you know, and get those certified organic seeds. But you know, uh, I, I just want to thank you both for doing your life's work because I uh, so admire it. And I, I really wanted to share your and your information with others. I know we're, we're kind of getting close to an hour here, but I would love for both of y'all to make, uh, you know, a, a little bit more. Uh, uh, Dr. Senna, if you were going to possibly share uh, your thoughts on what Dr. Plor just said, but uh, also add a few of your uh, tips for people on stepping stepping stones for you know dealing with the situation and the different things that we're combating. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see I just basically like a wholesome lifestyle, lots of time outdoors. If you live near water, take walks along the beach because there's really good grounding when you're walking in the water uh, by the ocean. So that's one thing lucky about living in Hawaii. Hawaii has a lot of organic farmers, by the way, that grow food, wonderful food all around mm -hmm. our area on mm -hmm. the North Shore. The West Side has is the exact opposite. It's being brand new GMOs are being developed for different crops to be resistant to things like glyphosate. So it's the whole, the, it's a schizophrenic island. It's quite interesting actually. In that oh, respect. well, wow. Yeah, so a lot of battles going on. Uh, I, Hawaii has done some great things recently though. The state actually passed a law that they could not use glyphosate on the school grounds. I mean, it makes sense that you wouldn't want to use glyphosate on the grounds of the grade schools, but they actually did pass a law not to do that. And I think they've become more conscientious of not using glyphosate to kill the weeds along the sides of the road. So there's ways that people can make a difference locally if they get involved with their local government, try to get the government to ban glyphosate usage in public places, especially look at the schoolyard, make sure your kids are not being exposed at, at school. These days, I guess it doesn't matter because we're being homeschooled. But, <laughs> um, you know, so I think uh, you mentioned bentonite clay. There's also fulvic acid and humic acid, which are organic matter from the soil that people have found useful for, um, for fighting uh, glyphosate. And glyphosate is a real mess for the minerals. So if you can, if you can get, um, eat foods that are high in minerals, is the mineral dense foods, that's certainly things like eggs and grass fed beef, you know, um, um, then uh, of course, everything organic, very, very important if it's at number one. And um, that's uh, I, also uh, Elizabeth taught me about turning off the phone and turning off the computer before you go to bed. So. I try to get in the habit of doing that every night. And I sometimes forget to turn it back on in the morning, so <laughs> I don't get the phone call. But <laughs> I think that's an easy way to reduce your exposure to EMS at night and sleep. Thank you for that. And I'm just going to expand on that just a little bit. Uh, I have been sleeping so much better since I've been turning off the Wi Fi at night. And uh, I have been using grounding. Uh, pillowcases and sheets on my bed for a long time. Uh, but just turning off that Wi-Fi at night and putting my cell phone in a, another room uh, has been very helpful. And then with the glyphosate, I, I've actually been a huge proponent of using mined salt for, for many, many years. In fact, I order mm -hmm. mine from Bolivia, uh, Bolivian rose salt, which is an old ocean that was you know, pre-pollution, and it was probably covered over by a volcano. volcano. Uh, but it has natural iodine in it, so it supports mm. your thyroid, and it has natural iron in it, and I struggled with anemia most of my life, and I know that EMFs also cut down on the amount of iron in your blood, so um, I think there's a huge rise in anemia, but uh, the, the salt actually has a little bit of natural iron in it, uh, as well as a lot of the other minerals that that you need. And uh, like your research shows is that the glyphosate is a mineral chelator. And yes. <laughs> you taught me this, Dr. Sam, but it was, it's been used in industrial chimneys for, for decades uh, to clean out the minerals. So people are just mineral deficient. And I've been a huge, uh, high quality mineral rich salt aficionado for, for decades now. And I carry it with me in my purse and everywhere I go. And I put it in my purified water because a doctor told me, he goes, Nancy, the electrolytes you need to absorb water is quite literally a fancy medical term for the word salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's gotta be the right salt. <laughs> so. That's very interesting. And of course, we, 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 we clean our water so thoroughly that we clean out all the minerals, you know, so we get practically distilled water. If, you, if you're using, invert, you know, some of these fancy water filters that could remove glyphosate, they also remove all the minerals. So it's really important to get those minerals back. And I think also not just buying plain old table salt, but buying uh, sea salt to use as your salt in your, in your cooking. We've been doing that now for some time. Um, Important. That's that's so important, and um, I have learned that because our oceans are so polluted, and and they actually have incredibly high levels of mercury in them, mm. um, uh, that we should not use salt that is taken from the oceans today. That people are getting mercury toxicity 
from eating, even if they aren't eating the fish, they're, if they're getting it from the salt. So I would say an old mined ocean that's not exposed to these high mercury levels. And there's also high mercury in the air because these uh, forest fires are putting out a lot of mm. uh, mercury. And so I think detoxification is a really important thing about being healthy. And uh, I even use uh, things like my bentonite clay cleanse to detox from the radiation from these uh, electromagnetic fields. And the glyphosate, I think the glutathione is an important nutrient that people can supplement with that can help them detoxify from the glyphosate. But also I think sweating, getting outside, getting the sunshine and sweating is a good way to detoxify. And then adding the high antioxidant foods um, that uh, have the color and the color is the antioxidant. <laughs> and I love the fulvic acid and I've been using that for years. And I love that, that you um, have found that that's a really good detox fire, but it also helps with the oxidative stress uh, because one tiny little drop of fulvic acid has a trillion antioxidants in it. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, I make a little vitamin cocktail every day for myself, sometimes twice. And I put, you know, liposomal vitamin C and some glutathione and probiotics and omega threes and some fulvic acid. And, you know, it's just one of my little power pack shots I usually have with a meal because I, I do believe all of these nutrients work synergistically together. Uh, like your research, um, found with, um, with the cholesterol working together with the sulfur compounds and the vitamin D and how that is very healing. You know, I think it's like a symphony in the body. And, <laughs> and so, you know, with the EMFs, we've got to like keep that symphony out <laughs> and, right. and, and let our symphony, you know, really, really sing in, in a positive way. And um, I know that we are going to try to shoot for an hour. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would love for y'all to have some, some closing thoughts. And then also, please, um, I am going to put all of your contact information below. But uh, talk about how people could get in touch with you and find your information if they, if they would like to look into this more. Yeah, well, if you can remember, remember my last name, S-E-N-E-F-F, -F, that's a good place to start because there's a, a lot of stuff you can find just by type, typing that into a search engine. Uh, you'll also find people uh, letting you know that I'm a bit of a wacko, but <laughs> you, can, you can take that part however you like. Yeah, um, but I'm going to argue with that now. one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my website, MIT, is, is messy, but it's, uh, it's people, P-E-O-P-L-E dot C-S-A-I-L, C -S -A -I -L, my lab, dot M-I-T dot E-D-U slash C-E-N-E-F-F. -E 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 I have a lot of material there, all my uh, papers that I've published in uh, peer-reviewed journals and various slideshows and some interviews and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of stuff on that, on that webpage. And I will second that. That is a brilliant webpage and I've gone there for research mm -hmm. when I've been writing books and things. And uh, I really appreciate that. And I do highly recommend that. And Dr. Plord, you've got like two or three websites with a, uh, an amazing amount of information. And uh, can you share, share yours? And then we'll come back to you, Dr. Seneff, and let you do some closing thoughts, but uh, Dr. Plord, would you please share your uh, Yeah, I, my sunscreen website, it's sunscreen, sunscreen's plural, sunscreensbiohazard.com, and then my information there about the sunscreens and about the books and uh, the two books that I've written. And I wasn't going to write two books, but uh, as they found more research and published more research about how dangerous the kids sunscreens are I I just had to write that second book because I just it, it's atrocious to me that this has been allowed to happen and it's encouraged you know the TV says oh you got to put sunscreen on your kids and it's it's not good not good for any anything on the planet and so so that sunscreen's biohazard and then also I have a bunch of things about EMF on emffreedom.com so that emffreedom.com has a bunch of EMF information and then uh, our products, 
smartdots.us, like you said earlier. And so there's a few few websites that you can get. And I'm very glad to answer emails. And uh, so you can find our emails on those. And I gave you a chart that gave our emails and our phone numbers. So, because we really want to help people. And it's confusing because it's a lot of information. It really is. It, it's just, you know, it, the EMF, the sunscreens, the, you know, what Stephanie's sharing, it's a lot to absorb, especially when it's contrary to the norm and that, you know, people have been comfortable with. So it's not only understanding that this is important, but it's also uh, the ability to grasp it and, and then to take action on it. So we're glad to answer any questions. So. Oh, thank you. So Dr. Sinef, why don't you take the floor again and, and please just kind of expand on, you know, your, your closing thoughts on, on what people can um, take away from this. And, and I'm hoping y'all will join me again <laughs> and, and we'll <laughs> expand further because I know uh, y'all both have so much great information to share that we could probably do another few hours. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would just say reemphasize the issue of eating good food. And it's not just a matter of certified organic, but also wholesome whole foods, stay away from processed foods, even if they are organic. You know, I think it's important to eat the food that's as little processed as possible to get all the nutritional value that's there. And, um, and then, of course, getting out in the sunlight, make sure you get plenty of sunlight to boost your vitamin D. And as Elizabeth said, eating all these foods that are rich in polyphenols and and flavonoids is going to protect you from the sun. And of course, if you're not getting exposed to glyphosate, you can produce melanin, which will also protect you from the sun. I actually say take off the sunglasses as well. I go outside with no glasses, no sunglasses. I think the sun is very healthy for the eyes. But if you are being exposed to toxic chemicals, they're going to disrupt that process. So it's very tricky. You have to eat healthy food and, uh, in order to be able to take advantage of the uh, benefits of the sunlight exposure to the eyes. Um, also, of course, stay away from highways that have lots of car fumes <laughs> and try to stay away from inner city, I think, for the same reason. And then, of course, the EMFs are going to be much higher in the city as well. So it's kind of sounding like country living. You know, if you can move out into the country and buy that piece of land and grow your own organic food. I mean, ideally, you almost want to, you know, disconnect from the world <laughs> because the world is a very toxic place right now and it's quite hard to. Uh, to avoid that. Um, it's frustrating that we're not, I wish I were seeing more discussion about that when they talk about COVID-19 and they say social distancing and wear your mask, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And they don't say it, it, testing and all of that. They're obsessed with testing and tracking and all of that. But there's, there's no mention of, you know, get some sunlight, get some vitamin D, eat some good food, eat some healthy food. I mean, those would be so much more important, so much more effective in my opinion. Um, than, than the social distancing as far as curbing the infection rate. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to just tap into that for just really a quick uh, thing, but uh, I've been heavily researching this. <laughs> and uh, they actually came out and said the social distancing has absolutely no scientific base whatsoever. In fact, most of the information shows total opposite uh, is that hugging will actually they've actually done studies that show hugging and being around people and being happy actually mm. increases your immune system and mm. can actually prevent you from getting things like a flu or a, a lung virus and it was actually a lung virus that they are flu um, lung problem that they were they said was really uh, something that it would offset. And then the mask wearing, uh, Dr. Russell Blaylock, who's a, a neuroscientist, he has got some great information on technocracy.news uh, channel on why this is one of the worst ideas ever for mm. anybody to wear and much, much less healthy people, but there is, quite literally not one good scientific research that shows that it is beneficial to your health, but there is quite a lot to say that um, having something preventing you from getting fresh oxygen into your lungs and having you breathe in your old bacteria and your old CO2 is actually going to 
make you so, so sick, especially if you have any kind of autoimmune problem, any kind of immune problem, any kind of breathing problem, uh, heart disease. Uh, it can, within minutes, literally keep your oxygen level so low it can cause irreversible brain damage. And that uh, the lunacy, in my opinion, uh, associated with mask wearing is quite, uh, quite wrong. And the fact that you're hearing all these medical professionals one minute say, don't wear a mask if you're healthy, and the next minute they're telling you to, to wear it, you have to wonder what their agenda is. And with every single leading health organization on earth, having say on their website very clearly, do not wear a mask if you're healthy, uh, until uh, even quite literally the CDC and the WHO both did a study this year, uh, I believe it was in May, that actually showed that those were right. They are, you are not supposed to wear a mask if you're healthy. And then if you look at OSHA regulations, and I was married to an environmental trial law year for 23 years, I knew OSHA regulations all the time because he was always trying to get his industries to comply with them. But if you're not getting 19.5% oxygen intake in your body on a regular basis at work, they can be prosecuted by federal law because that is incredibly important. And all these people that are employed who are being forced to wear these masks, they could actually sue, <laughs> sue their employer uh, for, for this particular thing, because they should be monitoring their, their oxygen levels on a, on a regular basis throughout the day and make sure that they are not getting irreversible brain damage or hypoxia from lack of oxygen. So, um, you know, I just am seeing really crazy uh, information coming at the public that in my, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, uh, it looks to me like it is absolutely the most incorrect health information I've ever seen in my life. And um, with the EMFs causing blood clotting and the glyphosate causing so many health problems, I mean, this really goes with the autopsies they found in Europe that uh, just show that it was thrombosis. They could not find a single virus involved. And of course, they've been rolling out the 5G and the high electromagnetic fields across Europe, but the head of the Bulgarian Pathology Association came out and quite literally said, this is, you know, just absolutely horrendous what is being perpetrated on the public because they're, uh, in, in the European opinion, there is uh, absolutely no virus and um, they're finding uh, all, the deaths are really due to uh, other circumstances and it looks like uh, the blood clotting, which is what the EMFs are causing. And they've rolled out this 5G during this, you know, this last five or six months and they, they've been upping that. So uh, I, I think there's a lot of different things involved and I, I could probably go on and on. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop there and let Dr. Plord uh, talk, but uh, I just, I do think that there's a lot going on uh, behind the scenes that we may not be aware of that uh, may not have our best interest at heart, but we've got to stick together and share our information and support each other in the best ways we can, because I think the social distancing, they want to divide and conquer. They want us not to be communicating. And with the mask on, you can't read people's smiles and you can't uh, read their body language. You can't communicate effectively. And of course, all of these directives go directly against our, uh, our constitutional rights, which should outweigh everything, which provides us with life. And without oxygen, you have no life. <laughs> <laughs> Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And I don't think wearing a mask <laughs> and being told the to social distance, which is really called Force isolation, which is a CIA torture uh, that they've devised over the last few years. So if you haven't watched Out of Shadows, uh, the documentary on the CIA and their mind control studies and their control of Hollywood, uh, I think you'll find it uh, very interesting. And I'll put a link for it below. But uh, everything that they've been uh, doing to people has quite literally gone against what I know 
as and I've been studying nutrition and health holistically for uh, about 30, 33 to 35 years now. And it, it, none of it makes sense to me. And it doesn't look like it is meant to make people healthy. And that's one reason I was asked you marvelous women to join me today and share your brilliant information so that uh, other people can, can find you and also uh, benefit from your great information. And then, you know, we are the pebbles in the pond. We're going to we're going to expand and, and help others. Uh, and so, and uh, I will stop talking now and, and let Dr. Floyd have the, the floor. <laughs> well, I, I agree with everything you've been saying. I just, I've written newsletters about the problem with math that, uh, that they're really not beneficial. They're not beneficial for viruses and they do block the oxygen and so many things about health when if, if it comes up with anaerobic and not enough oxygen, and that's going to create health problems down the road. It really is. I am very concerned about the state of health of all these countries that are demanding masks a year or two from now, plus the use of the disinfectant. Um, I get really sick from the disinfectant. The, the medical building near me, and I walk in, and I, I just feel like I'm hit a wall of disinfectant which breathing that, it can eventually lead to COPD. So what are we doing? We're leading you know, into a, many more health problems than, uh, than what the COVID is doing. So it's, it's just amazing that this has been allowed to happen and to keep happening. And uh, we need to get as many people as we can to say, hey, you know, no more masks and no more disinfecting. The amount of disinfecting we're doing is just to breathe that constantly is just not good. It really harms the lungs. Uh, it harms the little air sacs and those, those don't repair. So, and, and that's been proven. And so, you know, I, I get too sick. I, I realizing that I am sensitive to toxic chemicals and uh, eating at a restaurant that's using all those disinfectants, I have a headache by the time the, the meal's over and I'm choosing not to eat out anymore because of that so it's we've really got to wake up to that we're getting very bad health advice and to start saying no to it so so thank you for having this because we really need to wake up and and as far as the amount of electromagnetic radiation you know i appreciate your map of you know stephanie about where the biofield the uh, biofuels are it, and it also coincides with where all the electromagnetic radiation towers are. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they really do go together. And as far as our kids, you know, in California, they're allowing cell towers on all the high schools. It, it, it's just staggering to me and that they're allowing that. And they put them on their soccer fields. They're, they're, they're everywhere. And we've got to protect our kids. We've got to say no. You know, cell towers do not belong around our kids and their education or in their playing. So it, it's really, you know, thank you for having an avenue where people can get educated to help protecting our kids. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you. you so much. And um, I'm just going to add to that. Some Canadian schools found that the kids were dropping dead from heart attacks from mm. the high levels of magnetic genetic radiation from uh, even just the Wi-Fi they were installing. That's not mm -hmm. even including the 5G towers they put up in the last few months. So this is something that can be fought legally because there's not one single solitary insurance company that will insure these companies in these cell towers. And so I have learned from lawyers that if you get your doctor to write prescriptions for you or directives that say that quite literally what they found is this electromagnetic fields are assault. Those are in the 5G, of course, is a military assault weapon, but these are assaulting us and by law, by the, the legal aspects, and I'm from a family of lawyers, so I'm looking at all this, but if, if, they're bombarding you with something without your permission by law and each state's a little different you can say this is assault and you send them warning notices 
with your doctor and say, I want you to stop assaulting me. And you have to do it at least three times. And then they are responsible for any and all health conditions that you and your family or whoever have sent these notices to are experiencing and what they're finding in Australia and, uh, is they're, they're finding they're taking these towers down because you know if everybody in a community did this, they, they could not possibly pay the, the healthcare costs involved with all the cancer and the different situations that would arise. So, so if that is an action step people can take. And uh, I, if you want to contact me, I'll, I'll uh, share with you the information um, from uh, that lawyer that, that has been fighting these. And um, so also, I, I just wanted to add that um, uh, I've been using a hydroxyl air machine for about seven or eight years now, and it puts out a hydrogen oxygen. And I was so fascinated with this when I first learned about it that I flew out to Florida where they make them with U.S. military parts and spent three days in a room with a scientist explaining to me why this worked. And what it, the hydrogen and the oxygen do is the hydrogen helps the oxygen into your cells, but it's also high antioxidants. And this hydroxyl is over 15 in pH. So you're breathing in uh, higher quality oxygen with the hydrogen. So it's not flammable like a pure oxygen machine was doing. And I'm a certified licensed wildlife rehabilitator and I was using oxygen therapy to help my animals get well, but I found, you know, it was too volatile. And so I started using the hydroxyl machine and it kills all the mold, bacteria, virus, and fungus in your environment. And they've done studies that show it, it you know, kills uh, even, the, they tested it on um, the flu virus and they, they tested it on black mold. And, um, and it's approved by the FDA for medical facilities because it uh, disinfects things with no toxins and um, no work, which I like. But uh, one of the things I learned was these air conditioning uh, systems in big buildings, they pull in the polluted air from outside and they recirculate it. And so they were finding people were getting sick in these buildings from say being next to a place that had a contamination or, or a problem. And it circulated through the building and people would get sick from that. So. You know, I think there are some solutions for some of these things, but I agree with you, Dr. Plord, with the, this antibiotic stuff that people are just slathering all over themselves with the soaps and the disinfectant, it goes straight to their bloodstream and it just wipes out their immune system. And it's like taking an antibiotic every single time they do that. And so I have to admit, I've been warning people not to do that and to do, you know, things like, uh, Dr. Bronner's soap, which doesn't leave a residue, but it has like essential oils in it that naturally disinfect like peppermint oil or tea tree oil or something like that. And if you want to, you know, wash your hands in a way that uh, is healthier, you know, that's, that's what I've been doing and I would suggest that. And so I guess those are my closing thoughts on, on <laughs> some of this. <laughs> Studies show that soap and water is better than disinfectant. That's all you need. It, that's okay. what the studies show. So I did a whole newsletter on that because the disinfectants are so toxic. So, so. Well, I have to admit, I'd like to see y'all put some of this together and do a study together. <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all make a dynamic duo. <laughs> well, uh, Stephanie, do you want to say a closing thought uh, <laughs> or sentence? Or? Yeah, no, I totally agree with this thing about the antiseptic. I just think we've gone crazy with sort of antibacterial stuff, which is we know it's bad. You know, we've learned not to use antibacterial soaps, and now we're just going all back to that again. It's really frustrating. Well, um, to all our listeners out there, we, uh, we really wish you good health and, and great uh, joy in your life. And Thank you so much for sharing this, your valuable time with us today. And um, I guess I'm going to bring our, 
our little powwow here to a close. And uh, I just want to thank you, uh, Dr. Plord and Dr. Sinef for joining me here today. And I hope you'll join me again soon and we'll share more of your wonderful information with our, our listeners. And I'm Nancy Addison, <laughs> and my, my website's Organic Healthy Life. I'll put everybody's contact information below, and uh, if, if this gets taken off of YouTube, you can find this on my website. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we will, we wish you all the best. Thank, thank you for having you. us. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to find the stop button here. Okay.